ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೆವೆನ್ ವರ್ಷಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರುಕ್ಮಿಣಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟು ಟೆನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಆನ್ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ರುಕ್ಮಿಣಿ ರೋಟ್ ಇನ್ ಹರ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡೆಂಟಲ್ ಲೆಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಲವ್ ಬೆಗಿಂಗ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೆಸ್ಕ್ಯೂ ಹರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೇಸ್ we have been fortunate enough to hear from the pages of shrimad bhagavatam the unparalleled qualities of shri krishna which rukmini devi is relishing so many acharyas have written so many works they have spoken so much about krishna still there is so much more to speak it never gets to the end of the shore the same damodara ashtakam is sung every year the same deity of yashoda damodara is worshiped the same ekada grihadasi shu yashodananda gehini karmantara niyukta su nirmamanta swayam dadhi same damodara leela is being read ಬಟ್ ತದೈವ ರಮ್ಯಂ ರುಚಿರಂ ನವಂ ನವಂ ತದೈವ ಶಶ್ವತ್ ಮನಸೋ ಮಹೋತ್ಸವಂ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ಲಿ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ಇಟರ್ನಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎವರ್ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದ್ ಮಧ್ವಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಫೆನಾಮಿನಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದ್ ಮಧ್ವಾಚಾರ್ಯ ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ತದೈವ ಶೋಕಾರ ನವ ಶೋಷಣ ನೃಣ ಯದ್ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಯಶೋನುಗೀಯತೆ those who hear about the qualities of krishna what happens tadaiva shokaranava shoshanam drinam the ocean of sorrow in their life gets dried up this is what bhagavatam says those who hear about the glorious qualities of krishna their ocean of sorrow gets dried up Shripad Madhvacharya is asking this question. Is it really true that we have ocean-like or oceanic sorrow? Is that true? Because ocean has unlimited water. The depth of the ocean, the breadth of the ocean, the vast, expansive nature of the ocean. Is that how much suffering we have? It doesn't seem like. Then what to speak of drying up that ocean? Right? Bhagavatam says, tadaiv shokaranava shoshanam drina that by hearing of the glories or the qualities of krishna the ocean of sorrow gets dried up madhvacharya is asking this question is there ocean of sorrow in the first place he says yes how if we collect all the drops of tears that we have cried over millions of lifetimes it will definitely form an ocean Shripad Madhvacharya writes for so many thousands and thousands and thousands of births and in every birth thousands and thousands of times we have wept for material things sometimes for things sometimes for circumstance sometimes for people sometimes in joy and sometimes in sorrow ultimately material so he says if you just collect all the tear drops over so many species of so many lives it will definitely fill up an ocean and by hearing of the qualities of krishna just like rukmini who heard the qualities of krishna krishna personally comes and kidnaps rukmini from the assembly of shishupal similarly by hearing of the qualities of krishna a conditioned soul who's playing the role of rukmini in this world trapped by the shishupal called maya krishna personally comes and rescues the living entity like he rescued rukmini and takes him back to dwaraka which means the eternal abode 
where the person doesn't have to cry any longer. Which means Krishna has dried up the ocean of tears that we have collected over lifetimes. This is the power of Krishna's qualities. By hearing about Krishna, Krishna's name, discussing Krishna's form, hearing about Krishna's qualities, how lovely he is. The heart gets fonder with the desire that I want to be with such a master. In Mukunda Mala Stotra, King Kulashekar Alwar has written, Nathe na purushota metri jagatam ekadi pe chetasa sevye swasya padasya dhatari pare narayane tishthati yam kanchit purushadamam katipayam gramesamal parthadam seva yai mrgaya mahe naramaho muda varaka vayam. King Kulashekhara in this verse has compared two personalities. The boss of this world and Krishna. The different bosses that we serve in this world on one side and Krishna on the other. And now King Kulashekra in one Sanskrit verse makes a distinct difference between these two personalities. Nathe na purushottame tri jagatam ekadi pe chetasam. He says on one side we have the material boss who maybe owns a department or Maybe he's the CEO of one company. Or maybe he's the CEO of multiple companies. That's it. And on the other hand, we have Krishna, who is the creator, maintainer, and destroyer of all that exists. <laughs> Upper, middle, and lower planetary systems. Not planets, planetary systems. Okay? So that's one zero. What about their character? King Kulishekara says, the boss of this world is breaking all regulative principles possible, is eating everything possible, drinking everything possible. And his character is so contaminated that those who serve him get his favor. And those who don't serve him get fired. Even those who serve him have been serving him. If they fail, then they get fired. But this boss called Krishna, even if you hate him, and even if you're an atheist, and you use all his resources, all the time and the breath in your lungs to prove that he doesn't exist, he still continues to love you. <laughs> this boss, he gives you money, which you have to leave behind at the time of death. And this boss is ready to give you love of Godhead. And even if you accidentally, you don't intend to, accidentally, inadvertently, relic, you, you're completely um, averse to God, reluctant to serve Him, but you still accidentally happen to throw a lotus flower on the altar, let's say. Accidentally. He still considers it and remembers it over lifetimes, even when we forget what we did. And when we serve Him nicely, He's ready to give love of God. In. This boss, on the other hand, even if we serve him all our life, never will that time come when he will say, come and live with me in my house. And this master is waiting on the back of Garuda, putting all four arms downwards, dipping into the ocean of material existence, pulling jivas with all four arms and requesting them, please come and live at my abode where I become your servant. Kulashekara says, even after knowing this, lifetimes of human existence are wasted in serving him over him. Kulashekara, in another verse, he says, what to speak of that Krishna, who even when I was a pig, continues to be with me as the super soul. Even when my family lets go of me, Krishna continues to remain as the super soul. When we understand how much he loves us, during the time of COVID, every breath mattered. Every oxygen breath mattered. Every oxygen bed mattered. Right? That's when we realize how much cruel this world is. 
There were oxygen beds and there was oxygen supply, but people had it for their own family. And there's another person from another family dying without an oxygen bed and you're ready to see him die because you keep that for your family, right? And here is Krishna pumping in oxygen free of cost to the whole world for all times to come. <laughs> he created trees in a way that we get what we want. They take in the carbon dioxide and give us the oxygen. But we continue to cut the trees anyway. Only if the trees gave us Wi-Fi, maybe the world would be a greener place maybe. Right? This is the heart of Krishna. So yesterday we discussed about his bodily beauty. But what is the use of being physically handsome and beautiful if the heart is not that beautiful, right? Therefore, aho bakiyam stanakala kutam jigam sayapaya dapya sadvi lebhe gatim dhatrim uchitam tatonyam kamva dayalum sharanam prajema. My Guru Maharaj would say very famously <clears throat> He would say, You can test the character of a person by how he treats his enemies. <laughs> and what was the test for Krishna on day six? He welcomed Putana with open arms. In this world, when someone comes and, comes and gives us nectar in the form of advice, what do we do? We feed them poison. Don't teach me. I know. Okay? Right? Sounds like a teenager. Right? <laughs> right? I've been through teenage, so I know. That's how, that's how I was. That's how I am. When someone tells us, gives us good advice, I think you should be doing this. Okay, don't teach me, I know, right? So when someone gives us nectar in this world, we are on the edge of the seat to give them poison. And for Krishna, Putana came to give him poison. And Krishna gave Putana eternal nectar by making her into his mother. My Guru Maharaj would say, if Putana, who came to murder God, can become God's mother, then what to speak of the devotees who are singing and crying and weeping and chanting and dancing and serving him all their life? What doubt is there in their hearts? What, what doubt is there? There is no doubt. I'll tell you a little short story and then we'll come back to this. In South India, there was a very great devotee by the name Vipranarayan. Hmm? Vipranarayan, what was his name? Vipranarayan, in South India. He was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu in the Sri Sampradaya, hmm? Lakshmi Narayan. And he had some wealth, so he would cultivate flower gardens, flower gardens and also tulsi gardens. And from the flower from the flower gardens and tulsi from the tulsi gardens, he would mix them up together and offer flower tulsi gardens, uh, garlands <laughs> to Krishna, to Vishnu. Vishnu loved his service. Vipranarayan served with so much sincerity. Every day, he would go from the top of the hill down to collect water pots, bring it up and water all the plants and collect their flowers and trim off the leaves and trim off the weeds and he was personally taking care of all the flowering plants and all the tulsi plants. His fame started spreading everywhere. He would chant about Krishna. He would, even those who would come to take darshan of the Lord, he would speak to them, share some harikatha, give them some good advice. So Vipra Narayan was a celibate person, Brahmachari, who was serving God so well. As every story has it, there are twists and turns which bring out the best out of the story. There were two girls who were walking past that garden. They were sisters. So the older sister told the younger sister the glories of Vipranarayan. She said, do you know this garden, both the garden, flower garden and the Tulsi garden, both are cultivated by Vipranarayan. And Vipranarayan is a very advanced Sri Vaishnav sadhu. So the younger sister said, what do you mean, sadhu? What are his qualities? So the older sister said, he is always chanting. So the older sister started describing these qualities to the younger sister. 
And then the older sister said, and the crest jewel quality of Vipra Narayan is that he's a celibate monk. He never gets attracted to women. Now the younger girl chuckled. Her name was Deva Devi. She said, I haven't seen any man who doesn't get attracted to a woman. So the older sister said, Shh, don't speak like this. Vipra Narayan is a very great soul. The younger sister said, give me six months and I will prove to you Vipra Narayan's true nature. As happened in the story of Ramchandra Khan and the prostitute and Haridas Thakur. The younger sister challenged the older sister that I will break the celibacy of Vipra Narayan. Vipra Narayan was a very humble, simple-hearted Vaishnava. <clears throat> so this younger sister came to Vipra Narayan one day and said, Dear Swamiji, dear devotee, sadhu, I'm looking for a job. He said, I have but no, no vacancy. There's no job that I can offer you. She said, no, I feel like working in the garden. If I work in the garden, can you give me some remuneration? He said, well, I am looking for some help. If someone can help me. But what kind of remuneration should I give you? She said, maybe just prasad and stay, if that's okay. He said, there is no facility to stay here because there's only one kutir when I where I live. But prasadam, whatever I cook for Krishna, for Mahavishnu, you can take all of that. I don't need anything. So she said, okay. Deva Devi started to serve the garden. Vipra Narayan told her, there's one rule of the garden that you and I should always work on opposite ends of the garden. We should at no point work on the same side. Vipra Narayan said. She said, okay. It was one month, two months, three months and she was getting restless seeing how sincere and selfless and pure-hearted Vipra Narayan was. She was working on this side of the garden, the Tulsi garden, and Vipra Narayan was on the flower garden. And then when she would come to the flower garden, Vip Vipra Narayan would go to the Tulsi garden. They would take turns like that. But as life would have it, one day it started to rain profusely. The whole garden on both sides drenched, soaked with the rain shower. Vipra Narayan is completely wet. This Deva Devi is completely wet and Vipra Narayan immediately ran to his kutir because he had a shade. Deva Devi came running saying, I have no place. So Vipra Narayan said, okay, then you can be at my kutir. I have no problem, but I will step out. She said, no, no, I don't want you to be wet in the rain. Both of us can be in the shade. Now, this is the most vulnerable part. This is the most vulnerable part. Both of us can be in the shade. So Vipra Narayan said, okay, it's going to stop raining any time. No harm. In that small a time frame, looking at her, she was completely drenched in the rain. Vipra Narayan's heart got attacked by lusty desires. Deva Devi was very happy to see the advances of Vipra Narayan and in no time in that precarious vulnerable state he broke a principle and immediately he realized what have I done he told Deva Devi what is this what just happened and Deva Devi said well I have affection for you why don't we get married Vipra Narayan said, this is not possible. I am the servant of Narayan. How, what did I do? I am supposed to serve God with the flowers and the tulsi. How did this happen? I feel like ending my life. Maybe I should jump from this mountain. But somehow he held hope. Deva Devi desired to marry Vipra Narayan. And in this helpless state, Vipra Narayan didn't know what to do. He prayed to Narayana. 
he said my lord i have nobody except you you punish me the way you like but i don't belong to any dev devi i belong to you only one dev that's you i made this mistake my lord please forgive me very soon after that the silver glass cup of narayana and at the same time the silver necklace from the altar got stolen so there was a big hue and cry that the complaint went to the king the silver cup and the necklace are missing where is it where where did all that go they said well vipra narayan is the pujari let's ask him they went and asked vipra narayan he said well i locked the door at night everything was intact in the morning when i open everything is missing i don't know who stole then people in and around started talking vipra narayan i don't know if it's true but there are some rumors of an affair with a girl then they said ah, who's the girl the thing went to the king the king became enraged he's supposed to be a pure hearted brahmana who's appointed here for service who is this girl then everyone pointed it's deva devi they went to the house of deva devi in her closet that necklace and silver cup was found vipra narayan was put behind bars now vipra narayan is crying and weeping because he absolutely has no idea how this happened the king said how dare you do this you're supposed to be a pure hearted brahmana celibate monk and you fell in love with this girl and you gifted her the necklace of mahavishnu how dare you i'm going to give you death sentence vipra narayan cried innocently he said i am not i i am not involved in any way yes i made a mistake but i i didn't give any necklace to anyone no lifetime imprisonment now vipra narayan is thrown behind bars he's in the jail crying narayana what is what is my life what did i do very soon after that news broke out that there was theft in the temple and the thief stole and put it in deva devi's house to trap vipra narayan in this controversy so the king caught hold of the actual guilty thief and the thief blurted out the truth vipra narayan was called and the king said i release you from imprisonment because this person actually stole and you are innocent vipra narayan became very happy he came back and he saw deva devi still working in his garden Vipra Narayan said Mata ji I offer my obeisances unto you please I release you from all services in this temple for all times to come please don't come here I have no relation with you we didn't ever know each other you go your way I go my way Vipra Narayan came back and he saw the deity of Narayana he had darshan of Narayana after being imprisoned he came back for the first time and he fell flat to the ground crying my lord please forgive me please forgive me that night in the dream of vipra narayan he saw the conversation between lakshmi and narayana in vaikuntha lakshmi started to weep at the fall of vipra narayan my lord said lakshmi to narayana how did vipra narayan who such a wonderful vaishna fall from grace narayana said he made a mistake but i am achyuta i never fall from my vow or my promise of rescuing my devotees oh lakshmi very soon i will trap him in a controversy and purify him of all the reactions and deliver him from the fallen pit of sinful activities and very soon bring him back to my eternal service lakshmi said what are you going to do and narayana said i will have this whole thing whatever happened done and he will be thrown behind bars for a few days and lifetimes of karmic reactions will be washed off even if my devotee makes a mistake and leaves my service I am eternally at the service of my devotees I can never see them fallen I will put my hand 
tesham aham samudharta mrityu samsara sagarat krishna says in the gita i lift when my devotees make mistakes i uplift them i deliver swiftly deliver them through the story of vipra narayan we can see the heart of the supreme lord my guru maharaj would say every mistake that we make is like a fire flame you know every mistake that we make every sinful activity that we are into it's like a fire flame like a matchstick flame we find it to be blazing hot but krishna is an ocean of compassion when you take a fire flame from a matchstick and throw it into an ocean it doesn't even matter it doesn't even exist because krishna has so much nectar water like mercy oceanic mercy that every mistake of ours is like a matchstick significant to us but insignificant in comparison to krishna's merciful eyes this is the bhakta vatsalyata of the lord rukmini says katva mukunda mahati kula shila rupa my lord before i call upon your rupa i call upon your shila shila means heart rupa means form what is the use of someone with very beautiful body but very bad character we don't want such a person rukmini says but my lord between the form and your heart your heart comes first this is your heart you're very merciful if vipra narayan can be delivered from deva devi oh dwarkadish can't you deliver rukmini from shishupa <laughs> or can't you deliver us from this material world kadaham yamuna tire tava namani kirtayan udbhashpa pundari kaksha rachayishyami tandavam bhakti rasamrit sindhu rup goswami pad says my lord when will that day be mine which day kada aham yamuna tire tava namani kirtayan when will that day come my lord i will be free from this world and i will arrive happily on the banks of the jamuna and i will call upon your names and udbhashpa pundari kaksha i will cry tears of separation remembering the lotus eyed lord and rachayishyami tandavam singing and dancing your glories calling upon you with tears in my eyes my lord when will i by your mercy land up on the banks of the jamuna some day <laughs> such a wonderful heart such a wonderful heart putana had no good qualities esham ghosha nivasina muta bhavan tvam deva rateti na चेतो विश्व फलात् फलम त्वद परम कुत्रापि यन मुह्यति सद्वेशाद इव पूतनापि सकुला त्वम देव देवार्पिता यद् धामार्थ सुरित प्रियात्म तनय प्राणाशयास त्वत्कृते प्रेयर्स ऑफ ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मा जी इज सेइंग माय लॉर्ड यू आर सो मर्सिफुल इमेजिन समवन हु हैज बीन जॉब हंटिंग फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम राइट <laughs> job hunting for a long time doesn't get any success and finally lands a job you know 200000 gets in a good position right and he comes to the temple on a sunday and in the sunday feast they're announcing we need sponsors for the sunday feast right so imagine somebody who's job hunting for a long time always wanted to sponsor a sunday feast but never had money but finally now is starting to make money got his first paycheck and comes to the temple on a sunday and they make announcement of a sunday feast that we don't have sponsors this week it's only 350 dollars or whatever what do you think this person is going to do now hoping, hoping? yeah well, let's hope yeah <laughs> so he will put both his hands up he said yeah i'll do it right that's how krishna was on day 6 he always wanted to give mercy but never found a right recipient and at 6 days old comes putana and krishna offers everything that he could he offers his mercy to such an extent hey you've dressed up like my mom my mom walks like you she speaks like this she takes me in her arms like you've done she talks to me like you do she desires to give her milk like you do 
hey, you have the exact features like my mother. Why not I make you as good as my mother? Putana, are you okay with this, this offer? Motherly offer? Putana there comes with a desire, I'm going to murder this kid. Right? I'm going to dress up like a mother and poison this kid. And the kid's making his own plans. Srila Vishuddha Chakravarti Thakur is saying, both are cheating each other. <laughs> How amazing. He's using Ye Yatham Maam Prapadhyante as a principle to say Putana was that Rakshasi who appeared as a mother. So she wasn't putting her best foot ahead. She wasn't putting her actual face ahead. She was hypocritically acting something that she wasn't. And so was Krishna. Being God, he faked a baby. And Putana being a Rakshasi, she faked being the mother. So both were trying to cheat each other. And in this, both won the game. This is Krishna's mercy on Putana. So Brahmaji is saying, Krishna, you're so kind. She doesn't even offer any service. She brings in poison and this is what you have to reciprocate. And not just that. You're reciprocating to Putana because out of your love for Mother Yashoda. Right? You love your mom so much, anyone who dresses up like Yashoda, you're ready to liberate. And not just that, not just her, she along with her two brothers, Bakasur and Agasur, they all get liberated. So Krishna liberates Agasur because of Putana and liberates Putana because of Mother Yashoda. Brahmaji writes this, Sat Veshad Iva Putana Pisakulat, along with your family. Hey Krishna, if this is what you give for those who want to come and murder you, then what do you have now in your closet to give the Brajbasis who have given their life to you? The Brajbasis are ready to leave their homes, give their wealth, give up their life air. You are their... Prananath, you are their best friend, you are everything to them. Now, Krishna, what can you give them apart from yourself, which you have given even Putana? Which means you give yourself to Putana, but to the Brajbasis, you can't give anything higher. Therefore, you end up serving them to pay your debt. How beautiful. This is the heart of Krishna. Think at the Rajasuya assembly, the Rajasuya Yajna. Everybody had a fixed service. What service did Duryodhan have? Does anyone remember? Gifts, right? Collecting the gifts was the service of Duryodhan. Now, who assigned Duryodhan that service? Krishna, of course. Now, you please tell me, if there's someone who hates you, who is your enemy, do you ever want them to count your cash? No. You don't like someone, you don't want them to collect, collect and count your cash. Right? Why did Krishna keep Duryodhan to count the gifts that Yudhishthira Maharaj was getting? It seems antithetical to the idea of enmity. That's because Krishna was an excellent palmist. He read the palm lines of Duryodhan, where Duryodhan had a chakra, which meant anybody having a chakra, according to palmistry, it meant anything that comes to you will leave your hand ten times higher. And then that which leaves ten times higher will come hundred times in. Which means every gift that Duryodhana is collecting, he out of envy would want to give it out. And the more he gives it out, ten times higher would be the in inflow. Krishna knew this. He knew Duryodhan was such a person, he out of envy would collect all the gifts of Duryo Yudhishthir Maharaj, count them and try to distribute them very quickly so that Yudhishthir doesn't get anything. But according to the signs of the lines and palmistry, if he gives it out, then Yudhishthir will get it ten times more. Krishna read the palms of Duryodhan as he was shaking hands. He said, you should be in charge of collecting the funds. And Duryodhan is happy. He thought Krishna was on his side with, you know. But Krishna loves his devotees so much. Even through that, he was thinking of how he could benefit Yudhishthir Maharaj. 
What was Krishna's personal service? Picking up the plates of the visitors? Think about it. Washing their lotus feet and picking up their plates? It's like being at the, stu uh, the, the, the shoe stall at a yatra, Kartik yatra, let's say. You go to Brindavan or Jagannath Puri, and there's 13,000 people in a yatra, and then the temple president or you know, some big managerial positioned person is at the shoe stall. That was Krishna at the Rajasuya Yajna. Why? Because out of his love for Yudhishthir Maharaj. How many times did Krishna come for the Pandavas? Whether it's the Akshaya Patra, Durvasamuni, whether it's the wax palace burning, whether it's the poisoning of Bhima. Think of the poisoning of Bhima. Now, it's breathtakingly beautiful what Krishna did. Duryodhan poisons Bhimsen, ties him up and throws him into the water so that he's poisoned and if he survives the poison, he will drown. And Bhim goes underwater and reaches the abode of the snakes. And the snakes find him to be a foreign object, alien object identified. And the snakes in that Sarpa Loka start biting Bhim, thinking that he's a foreign body. And the poison of the snake that they just bit in and pushed into the body of Bhim is the exact medicine to oust the poison that Duryodhan threw into the body of Bhim. In Ayurveda, there's a saying, Vishasya Visham Aushadam. When there's one type of poison in the body, the Ayurvedic doctor administers another type of poison to kick the first poison out. And Krishna knows this. Wow. Bhim is given a certain type of poison by Duryodhan. And now to kick that poison out, Krishna takes Bhim down to this sort of planet, this planet of the snakes, Sarupaloka. And they bite. And their poison kicks out the poison of Duryodhan in the body of Bhim. And Bhim just comes out with the strength of 10,000 elephants. Phenomenal. When Draupadi was in Agre Kuruna Matha Pandavanam, in the state of dishonor in the Kuru assembly, nobody except Krishna helped her. What Bhakta Vatsalyata, what level of love for the devotee. Whether it's breaking the pillar for Prahlad, or coming straight into the forest for Dhruva, or for Narada who had just lost his mother, Krishna comes and gives darshan. How beautiful. How merciful is the Lord. Manigriva and Nalakuer break the regulative principles, are bathing in Ganga. They have aparad against Ganga, aparad against Lord Shiva because they are in the foreign, you know, they are in the heavenly abode of Lord Shiva. Aparad against Narada Muni. And in return, what do they get? Life in Brindavan as trees where they can see the pastimes of Krishna. If this is not mercy, what is? Many times we say Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is merciful and we kind of throw Krishna out of the bus and throw Ram under the bus. But we fail to understand Ramachandra and Sri Krishna Chandra are very, very merciful. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just happens to be most merciful, right? Not that he's merciful and they're not merciful. They are very, very merciful. Think of the story of Sakshi Gopal. When Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami narrates Sakshi Gopal, if you actually just, from a neutral standpoint, think of the story, it just, just happens to be a problematic marriage proposal, right? There doesn't seem to be any devotion there. But who is speaking this story and who is listening to this story? Brahmanya Dev Gopal era Mahimaya Dhanya Nityananda Vakta Jar Shrota Sri Chaitanya. Who spoke this pastime? Nityananda Mahaprabhu. And who is listening lovingly to this pastime? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why would two sannyasis, Gaur and Nitai, waste their time discussing a marriage, a failed marriage proposal? That's exactly what happened in that story. The older gentleman says, well, I'll give you my youngest daughter in marriage, and then things flip backwards. We know the story. Kaviraj Goswami says, Brahmanya Dev Gopalera Mahimaya Dhanya Nityananda Vaktajar Shrota Sri Chaitanya. Nitai spoke 
and Mahaprabhu was listening with rapt attention, not to the failed marriage proposal, but to the love that Krishna had for his devotee. That was the central theme of the story. Everything else is just a detail. Now we will say, well, Sakshi Gopal as the deity walked for, Krishna, for the devotee. Maybe it's just hallucination made up story, right? Could just be a cooked up story. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami Pad says, how many minutes do you think Gopal walked behind that Brahmin devotee? How many minutes? He would walk, right? So he, there's some walking time involved. How many minutes do you think he walked? Any guesses? 10 minutes? Okay, that's a good start. I almost feel like I'm auctioning something. <laughs> yes? Days. Okay. Hours. It must be, yeah, if, if, if I say yes to minutes, and if I say hmm to days, it must be hours, right? I'll give you a hint, it's days. How many days? Fifty-one. Kaviraj Goswami Pad says, the deity of Gopal walked behind the Vaishnav for hundred days. Padbhyan chalanyo pratima swarupo brahmanya devo hi shataha gamyam. When you have Bhagavat Katha for seven days, what is it called? Saptaha. Aha in Sanskrit means days and sapta means seven. So if it's 100 days, what should the, day, the term be? Shataha. And Gamyam means to walk. Padbhyam Chalan. The Lord walked with his feet. Which Lord? Pratima Swarupo, the deity. Why? Brahmanya Deva. Because he loves the devotee. And how long did he walk? Shataha Gamyam. Padbhyam Chalanyo Pratima Swarupo Brahmanya Devo hi Shataha Gamyam. Deshau yayau viprakrte dhute ham tam sakshi gopalam aham natosmi. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. I bow down to that deity of Sakshi Gopal, the heart of Krishna, who very mercifully, lovingly, out of love for his devotee, walked hundred days. Why? So that the dust from the feet of that Vaishnav can smear the transcendental body of the Lord. And bless the Lord. This was the heart of the Lord. In the Gita, Arjuna says, Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan. My Lord, you are all pure. But in the Bhagavatam, the Lord says, Anu Vrajam Yaham Nityam Puya Yityangri Renu Bihi. The purity comes in my life when I walk behind the lotus foot dust of my pure devotees. How amazing. This is the loving heart of the Lord. This is how much he loves his devotees. This is Sheila. This is first class character. Think about Rama Avatar. <clears throat> two boons. Who has two boons? Dashara did not ask two boons. Kaikai has two boons. Right. Ramkatha next time. <laughs> Kaikai asked for two boons to Dasharat Maharaj and on the power of those two boons what happened we being insignificant materialistic minded selfish conditioned souls we don't like any change in our plan right we don't like think about Sri Ramachandra he is all set to be coronated one evening before his coronation he gets to know there's a change in plan. There's no coronation happening. Bharat is going to become the king. You can't even see the coronation. You can't live in this kingdom. You can't even live in one of the villages around this kingdom. You drop all your royal connections behind, including food, clothing, and shelter, and you are shelterless into the forest for 14 years. 
And Sri Ramachandra folds his palms, offers his obeisances to Dasharat, Dasharat Maharaj and Kaikai and said, Oh dear mother, O oh Kaikai, your words are as potent to me as Mother Kaushalya's. Whatever you order me, in that lies my supreme good fortune. Offering his obeisances and his head at the feet of Mother Kaikeya and Dasharat Maharaj, Sri Ram begins to walk into the forest. The whole of Ayodhya is weeping at this reversal. Sumanthara, the minister, cannot even believe what's happening. But Sri Ram walks. If this is not character, what is? Rukmini Devi is begging, my dear Lord, Kula, first class family lineage. You are in the same family lineage of Krishna as Shivi Chakravarti, the great King Shivi. Now who doesn't know the story of Shivi? There was a very great king by the name Shivi Chakravarti. And he was known for his magnanimity. Shibi Chakravarti was such, any resident in his kingdom could come and speak to Shibi Chakravarti. And Shibi Chakravarti would put the needs of the Praja, the citizens, over his own personal needs. One day Shibi Chakravarti was in the forest. Shibi Chakravarti one day was in the forest hunting. And suddenly he saw a little pigeon, a little dove, flying through the sky, coming, bowing down to Shibi Chakravarti. Oh dear king, oh dear king, I'm in the state of utter emergency, life death situation, please help me. Have you ever seen a dove speak like that? Interesting, right? When Krishna wants, mukam karoti vachalam, he can make even a dumb person speak. Then what to speak of the singing of Gajendra's prayers and what to speak of Garuda chanting the Samaveda. So this dove in the middle of the forest came taking shelter of Shibi Chakravarti and said, Oh dear Chakravarti, oh king, I am an insignificant part in your kingdom. Please give me shelter. The king said, sure. Well, I mean, what do you want? What help can I give you? Can I provide you? The dove said, there's a hawk or an eagle, let's say, which is chasing me and this hawk is about to kill me. Please give me shelter. So the king said, that's simple. I will fight the hawk. You just hide behind me. You being my citizen in my kingdom, I'll protect you. The king took his sword and he was ready for the hawk to come. The hawk came in flying and told the king, even I am a citizen in your kingdom. You can't take sides with the dove and against the hawk because we are both citizens in your kingdom. So he put the sword back. Shibi Chakravarti said, so what can I do for you, dear hawk? Hawk said, well, just give me the dove. You don't have to do anything. Just let me eat my Mahaprasade Govinde Nama Brahmani Vaishnava. Yeah? Let me just get what I want. Shibi Chakravarti said, I can't give you that because that dove has taken shelter of my feet. And according to the Kshatra rules, if someone takes shelter at the time of dire emergency, remember, remember Vibhishan? Sakra deva prapannoya stavasmiti sayachate abhayam sarvada tasmai dadami etad vratam mama. Such an immortal verse of Valmiki Ramayana. Vibhishan bows his head down and Sri Ramachandra says, once if any person, anyone, including Ravana, Sakrit eva prapannoyas bows down to me and says, Oh my Lord, I belong to you. Then it is my bold proclaim, proclamation, eternal word that I will make that person fearless by granting them protection. So Shivi Chakravarti said, Well, the dove took shelter of my feet in the time of real death situation. I need to protect the dove. The hawk said, but you're taking sides with one citizen against the other, but I need food too. If you don't give me the dove, then what am I going to eat? Shibi Chakravarti thought for a while. And he said, oh dear hawk, what other option is there apart from the dove? 
the hawk said, why don't you give me some flesh from your body then? Shibhi Chakravarti said, okay. He removed his sword. He said, what part of my body do you want to eat? The hawk said, maybe your thigh. Shibhi Chakravarti went to cut the thigh. The hawk said, remember, it should be the same weight as the dove. If you want to protect the dove and you want to feed me, then I want you to feed me the same weight as the dove. Take the flesh off your thighs and give it to me. Shibhi Chakravarti agreed. He took the sword and he started scooping his flesh out. He put a weighing scale and on one side he had the dove and the other side he was throwing his thigh flesh. And irrespective of how much he tried, the dove just happened to be way more heavier than his thigh flesh. Now he started scooping all the flesh possible from one thigh, it didn't work out. Then he even added, started scooping the flesh out of his second thigh. And he put both of that on the, on the weighing scale. But it still didn't map and didn't weigh back to the balance of the weight of the dove. The hawk said, dear king, you're failing in your promise. The king started scooping flesh from his hand and flesh from his calves. Can you imagine the magnanimity, the compassion of a king that to save the life of a dove, he is for all times to come up to his death ready to live without thighs? What level of selflessness is that? Think of Dadichi Muni in the sixth canto. He is ready to die so that bones of his body could be used to make a weapon. How selfless can someone be? I'm ready to die for you to live. And for who? For a dove. Just because the dove took shelter of the king. That's how ethical and moral and upright the kings were at that time. Doesn't matter what part of his body he was scooping, the flesh cumulatively did not match the weight of the dove. Shibhi Chakravarti finally took the sword and placed it on his neck to kill himself. As he was just about to chop his head off, head off, or the neck off, the hawk and the dove came back to their original forms. The hawk was Indra, and the dove was Agni, fire. And they both stood with folded palms and told Shibhi Chakravarti, we had heard of your magnanimity up there in heaven. But we just wanted to come and check how, of, how much of that was true. We are so impressed. We have never seen a king this selfless. O king, ask for a benediction and I will give you. Shibhi Chakravarti said, may I fall in the same dynasty as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna comes in the same dynasty of Shibhi Chakravarti. Rukmini invokes the story of Shibhi Chakravarti and tells Krishna, people in your dynasty as kings were ready to give their life to save a dove. You don't have to go that far. I just need to be rescued. Oh dear king, please help me. With every adjective that she uses for Krishna, there's a back end story. And Rukmini's fundamental theme is save me. But she's asking that through so many different ways. Kula. Family lineage of Shibhi Chakravarti. Shibhi saved a dove, you can save me. Or Kula or lineage means your mother, Devaki, could forgive Kamsa. With, who performed so much atrocity. I didn't hurt you so much. Why won't you forgive me and come? Sheila. Sheila means character. Those who are utterly destitute. Oh Krishna, you shower your mercy on them then I think I am a right recipient. Please shower your mercy on me. Kula, Sheila, Rupa, if you are attracting the whole world with your form, my getting attracted, me getting attracted to you is not my problem, it's yours. Because you're attracting everyone, so if you are the reason for the problem, then who's gonna solve it? Not me, but you. Vidya. Unparalleled, so this is Katwa Mukunda Mahati Kulashila Rupa, right? Vidya. 
knowledge. If you can tell your parents at birth about their past lives, can you predict my future life? Oh, Krishna, can you tell me where I will be tomorrow? Is it Shishupal or is it you? You in 64 days, you could control your sleep and you learned so much from your guru. Now is the time to execute it. What's the use of learning all the archery from your guru if you can't do it now against my army? Huh? Vidya, you're known for Bhagavad Gita. When was Bhagavad Gita spoken? When Arjuna was in difficulty. So for Arjuna who's a devotee in difficulty, if you can speak Gita, I am a devotee and I am in difficulty. Just take me on the same chariot. For Arjuna, you were on the same chariot and you spoke the Gita. I don't even have to hear the Gita from you. Just take me on the same chariot as yours. Vidya. Vayaha. Vaya means age. How young was Krishna? Astonishing. Advaitam achutam anadim anantarupam adhyam purana purusham navayovanamsha. Look at the adjectives, all contradicting. Adhyam is the first being. How first? Purana purusham. Even the Puranas describe him. In one place I was saying Purana purusha and I asked what does it mean? So one person was saying Purana purusha. Bhot purane hai Bhagwan. Bhot purane. He is very old. I said, how do you know that? He said, Advaita Acharya has beard. <laughs> I said, that's not Purana Purusha. <laughs> Purana Purusha means he who is described in the Puranas. So then naturally the question would be, if he's the first being described in the Puranas, he would probably be very old. Navayavanamcha. No, he's super young. How young? Prabhupada said on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, how old was Krishna? Yeah, 96 years old. Prabhupada said Krishna had great grandsons at that time. But how old does Krishna look? He's always smiling. Next year in our Krishna Balaram Mandir in Vrindavan, it's going to be the 50th year of anniversary. 50th installation anniversary, which means Krishna Balaram are turning 50 years old. Do they look 50 in the central altar of Krishna Balaram? They're still happily standing. <laughs> Balram standing, Krishna standing. No 50 year old stands like this with his brother anyway. Right? They look so young. He looks like a 16 year old. In Dwarka, Krishna had a royal assembly. It was called the Sudharma assembly. Now what was the speciality of the Sudharma assembly? It would freeze your age. What does that mean? Anybody who enters the Sudharma assembly... Now that's the assembly where you can go and post your questions and pose your problems to Krishna and he will solve it as the king, right? But till the time your problem is not solved and you are in that assembly, you won't feel sleepy, you won't feel hungry, you won't feel thirsty, and most importantly, you won't grow old. We need something like that in India. In India, the case starts with the great-grandfather, then his son, his grandson, great-grandson, and the next generation is actually the one who witnesses the result. Every case takes like 92 years to be solved. Right? By then, four or five generations have all already left their body, don't even know why the case is going on. But the Sudharma assembly is not like that. The case is proposed to Krishna, the witnesses come in, the person with the problem comes in, and till the time the discussion goes on, time freezes. Imagine Krishna, who's always in the Sudharma assembly. How can he be old? He's ever fresh. This is what Rukmini is saying, vaya, age. We discussed kula, shila, rupa, vidya, vaya. Now dravina. Dravina means wealth. Everyone's checking on Google. Elon Musk, net worth, right? Jeff Bezos, net worth. Let's check Krishna's net worth. What do you say? Rupa Goswami Padin Bhaktira Samrata Sindhu gives an estimate, not of Krishna's net worth, but Krishna's average charity. How much he gives away. So 
if you can just know how much he gives away in charity, well, you know he's making much more than that. Rupa Goswami has given a calculation. Ready? Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> you can find in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Look at Krishna's wealth, okay? Just mixing it with Dravina and Dhamma. Dhamma means strength as well. So I'm just going to take a story with the strength and the wealth. Hmm? Honey ladening them together. In a place called Prakjyotishpur in the 10th canto is where Bhaumasur lived. Now Bhaumasur is actually the son of Krishna. Because when Krishna appeared as Varahadev, he, Varahadev lifted Mother Earth. And although it's quite a heroic pastime where Varahadev lifts Mother Earth, uh, apparently it was quite a romantic moment. And Varahadev and Bhumi had a son called Bhauma. So Bhaumasur is actually the son of Krishna. But he fell into bad company, the company of Mura, a demon whom Krishna killed and Krishna is called Murari. And because of Mura's bad association, Bhauma, who is the son of the Lord, became Bhaumasur. Now Bhaumasur stole 16,000 princesses and imprisoned them in the jail as captives. Now why is it that nobody can help him? Well, he lived in a fort which had walls fully made of electric, live electric wires. And if someone could cross that, then he on all sides had water ponds with man-eating crocodiles in there. And in this way, he had layer after layer after layer of security. And Mura demon was one of the persons protecting. Bhaumasur also had his 10 sons protecting the property. And within, inside, Bhaumasur had kept 16,000 princesses as captives. Krishna didn't have to fight any of them because he took the airway on Garuda. <laughs> So he didn't have to go through the man-eating crocodile ponds. He didn't have to go through the electrocuted or electric wire-filled walls. He was just going from the top of Garuda, having pity on all of these people. You think you can stop me? Well, I'm in the airway. The lights, the traffic lights don't hold true for the airplane, right? So Krishna's like on Garuda. He's like the airplane. And Mura is standing right there and the ten sons of Bhauma, they're trying to protect. But Krishna with the Sudarshan Chakra <laughs> beheads all of them. He uses his club, smashes everyone to death, including Mura, including Bhauma, releases 16,000 princesses and say, now all of you can go home. They say, wait a minute. We've been kept as captives in the jail by Bhauma and he has touched us. So now if you send us back to our family, they're not going to accept us. Nobody will get married to us because everyone knows we have been kept here by Bhauma. So our lives are spoiled. Krishna said, so what are your plans? They said, is it, is it possible if you can marry us? Krishna thought he just counted. He said, okay, if that's going to keep all of your future lives protected so be it and what did he do he arranged for golden palanquins from the jail to Dwarka and each one of those princesses sat as queens of Krishna and they were taken to Dwarka where Vishwakarma had already built 16,000 golden palaces one for each of those princesses what a deliverer straight from the jail you become the queen with a golden palace and the best among ornaments and saris and the best food and personal servants. And at every moment, Krishna's there with each one of these queens. Narad Muni is amazed. What's happening? So Narad Muni tried to check. He, he went from one palace to another. And in one palace, Krishna's performing the yajna. In another palace, He's sitting and listening to the Puranas. In another palace, he's honoring his meal. And they're all in different time zones. Narad Muni gets baffled. What's happening? And they all come out of the palaces. 
And Krishna merges as one Krishna, goes into the Sudharma assembly, answers everyone's questions, comes out in the evening, splits into so many Krishnas and goes into his own palaces. And then Rupa Goswami gives the calculation for Krishna's wealth, which will be the cliffhanger for tomorrow. So let's go home and meditate on how many zeros would probably exist on Krishna's account. Whether it was three figure like mine or four figure, five figure, six figure, eight figure, fifteen figure, time will tell. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo Shishiradha Kunjivi Hari Ki Srila Prabhupada Ki Gaur Premanande.